All right, so here are some chapter six uh, selected problems. The first we're gonna do is number 42. So super simple one, um, we're using this equation. Basically the problem says if you absorb 196 kilojoules of heat and the surroundings do 117 kilojoules of work on the system, what is the change? So since the system is getting both of those, they're absorbing the heat um, and the work is being done to them, it's just really simple, 196 plus 117, 313 kilojoules. Now remember, if the system was doing work, then that would be a negative number. The next we're gonna do is number 48, that's two. Number 48 says how much heat is required to warm 1.5 kilograms of sand from 25 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna use MCAT, Q equals MC delta T, and that's a delta, not an A, even though I call it MCAT. So our mass in this case, we need to be in grams. So 1.5 times 10 to the third grams. The specific heat you can get from a table, um, there's a table in your book that has that, it's 0.84 joules per gram Celsius degree, and then our change in temperature is from 25 to 100, I believe is what it said, um, and that's 75 um, Celsius degrees of change. So just multiply those together, 9.45 times 10 to the fourth joules. Next up is number 50. Number 50 says, for an unknown mass of each substance initially at 23 degrees Celsius, um, if it absorbs 1.95 times 10 to the third joules of heat, uh, the final temperature is recorded, find the mass. So we're using the same equation here. We're using Q equals MC delta T. Uh, the only difference is here, it gives us the energy, the specific heat, and the temperature change, and it wants us to calculate the mass. So it's really simple, so I'm just gonna do A. So if you have 1.95 times 10 to the third joules, we have to be in joules, that's a J. What is the mass? And for A, we're doing Pyrex glass. So again, you would look at the table, figure out the specific heat for that, and you would see that it is 0.75. And the change in temperature here goes from 55.4, well, it goes the other way, but this is how you would subtract it, from 23 degrees. And so you would simply solve for M here and get a mass equal to 80.2 grams. Next up is number 60. Number 60 says, what mass of methane must be burned to emit 267 kilojoules of heat? And so, you know, this is, this is pretty straightforward. If you know the kilojoules of heat you need. So what you know here is you know that the delta H of the reaction is equal to negative 802.3 kilojoules. And that is in one mole of methane. So what it's saying is how many moles do you need, how many grams do you need, but how many moles do you need to make 267 kilojoules? So how I did this is I just said, all right, times, you know, what number of moles, some number of moles will give me negative 267. And when you do that and you solve it out, you get that your moles of methane equals a third 
And then the last thing we need to do is just turn that to grams. So one mole has a mass of about 16.042. So that gives you a mass of 5.34 grams of methane. All right, so for 78, this is kind of, this is addressing Hess's law. And what you know is that, two, that A plus 2B yields C plus 3D and your delta H is equal to 155 kilojoules for that reaction. So the questions are, determine the value of H for each reaction. So I did C because it looked difficult and I figured that'd be one that you'd want me to do. And it gives you the reaction of one half C plus three halves D yield half of an A and a B. And it wants to know what the delta H for that reaction is. So it's just like Hess's law, but kind of backwards. You just need to look and see what was done to this reaction to give you this reaction. So the first thing that was obviously done was it was flipped, right? It was flipped around. Somebody flipped it, which means, remember, you just multiply by negative one, your value of H, so we're gonna have to do that. And then the other thing that was done to it, everything is half. So you had one A, you now have half an A. You had two B, you have one, right? Three, you have three halves. So it was halved. So it was halved, so that means we need to have our delta H. So all we do is our negative, or our 155 positive, we're gonna multiply that by negative one and get negative 155 kilojoules for the flipping of it. And then we have it so now just divide this by two and we get our answer of negative 77.5 kilojoules. All right, for number 88, 88 is that really nasty, scary equation that looks terrible and it's really not once you kind of understand the concept of it. So it's just that the delta H for a reaction is equal to the sum of the moles of your products times their respective heats of formation. And this is again, this is all products, minus the sum of the moles of your reactants times all of their respective heats of formation. So it looks a lot scarier than it is, but you'll see it's not. So, so we do A here. A gives us this reaction. 2H2S plus 3O2 yields 2H2O, and that's liquid, that is important plus two SO2. And so all we do is we consult the table. There's a table in your book. You could Google a table though. They do, there is some, some variance there, so you're probably gonna stick with the one in your book. Um, and you just find all these values. So this value on that table of delta H's is negative 20.6. This is zero. This is negative 285.8. And this is negative 296.8. So now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply. So it's the sum of the moles of your products times their delta H's. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply this by 2, and this by 2, and then add them together. Then multiply this by 2 and do this sum minus this sum. So the delta H of our reaction is equal to negative 285.8 times 2 
there's that one, plus negative 296.8 times 2. So there's that one. So now we have summed all of that. So then that's done. And then we need to subtract that from negative 20.6 times 2. And again, if, if, there was, if this had a value, then that would be in there as well, but it doesn't, so we don't have to do that. And you go ahead and do that math right there. And you end up with negative 1124 kilojoules. Now, next up is 128, but I'm actually going to skip it and do 130 because 128 is really nasty and needs a lot of room. And so I'll just put 130 on this page and, and then we'll come back to 128. So 130 is saying if you have 1.765 grams of ethanol, you might see it written a couple different ways. This is how I'm going to write it, but it doesn't mean it's the only way. Um, and you combust it in a calorimeter and the calorimeter goes from 294.33 to 295.84 and the specific heat of your calorimeter is 34.65 kilojoules per Kelvin which is the same as kilojoules per Celsius degree. It's asking you to calculate the basically the delta H here. It's, it's asking you to calculate the kilojoules per mole that this combustion gives off. So first thing, let's calculate the kilojoules it gives off. So your Q is equal to the specific heat of your calorimeter times the change in temperature. So in this case, that's 34.65 times the change in temperature here is 1.51. So you bust that out and you get 52.32 kilojoules. So that's how much energy 1.65 grams, 1.765 grams give off. But it's asking for the energy per mole. So let's just turn this to moles real quick. 1.765 grams times in a line. One mole is 46.068 grams. And that will give you 03831 moles. So now it's just kilojoules per mole. So this divided by that. 0 0.03831 and you get a final answer of negative 1,370 kilojoules per mole. All right, lastly, we are going to tackle 128 now. Basically, 128 is a simple heating and phase change problem, um, but then it asks you to give a bunch of information. So you need your delta E, your delta H, your Q, and your work. Those are the four things it asks you for. So it gives you the pretty standard, um, you know, you have water at such degree, it turns into steam at such degree problem, which is, is pretty basic. So we'll just take care of that first. So we know that for us, we have to do the energy of the water is going to be equal to now the specific heat it gives you are in moles not in grams um, per celsius degree so that's fine so instead of mc delta t we're going to do nc delta t so first you have to heat up your water then you have to boil your water then you have to heat up your steam and technically it's h2o as well but obviously i just wrote it that way so let's do this real quick you're given the value of 
Oh, by the way, since they told us it's one mole, I'm just leaving those out. You could put a one in there if it would make you feel better, but it's not gonna do anything and I'm short on space. So they give you a specific heat of 75.3 and you're increasing by 20 degrees. It tells you that your latent heat of vaporization is 4.07 times 10 to the fourth. And the specific heat of your steam is 25 and you're increasing by 10. So you do all that and you get 42.5 kilojoules. So that's gonna equal your Q, but it's actually also going to equal your delta H. So now we can come up here and we could plug in our Q and our delta H values. So our delta H is 42.5 and our Q is 42.5. All right, now for the fun part. So we know that, and maybe you don't yet, but you're about to know that, work equals your negative pressure times your change in volume. Well, your change in volume in this case is gonna be equal to the volume of your gas minus the volume of your liquid. Well, if you have one mole of liquid, of water, that's 18 grams, that's 18 milliliters based on the density of water. So uh, we can just say that, we just can say that we know that to be the volume of our liquid. So now we have to figure out our gas. Well, we can rearrange PV equals NRT to get NRT over P. Again, N and P are constant, or they're, they're both a one in this case, so we can leave them out or I'll just put them there. Okay. R for this value, we need to use the 08206 value of it. And then our temperature, remember we're at 110 Celsius now, which means our temperature is going to be 383 Kelvin. So we do all that and you will get 31.43 liters is your volume of your gas. So then when we subtract our volume of our gas, we since our volume of our gas is much bigger than our volume of our liquid obviously, uh, we don't get a very big difference, 31.41 liters, which now we can plug back in to our work equation. So if work equals negative P times delta V, again, we're saying P is one, which makes it easy. So it's just 31.41 atmosphere liters but we don't want atmosphere liters, we want joules. So that's easy. Just a little conversion here. There are 101.3 joules in every one atmosphere liter. So that gives us negative, this should have been negative by the way. That gives us negative 3.2 kilojoules, I converted in my head there. And then, so we know our work is negative 3.2. So last is our delta E, which is that really easy equation that we did in uh, problem number one, where delta E equals Q plus W, so in our case, 42.5 minus 3.2, which is 39.3 kilojoules. So just to complete the table, because we've gone this far, we may as well, there it is.